What's going on, my boys? Today is a very special day. We're going to be getting in there to test out the Duelist AI's first deck that it has created after the 2.0 update. If you're late and didn't know, I created an AI on ChatGPT's platform. You can go to ChatGPT and go to the App Store, look up the Duelist AI and get the app. You can use the app now to analyze any archetype in excruciating detail and find synergies that you could not find before. I need your help desperately in 2025. So many people utilize the GPT and it learned so much, but the things that the GPT can learn can only go so far based on the users. I need duelists to become duelist engineers. I need you to pick up the cards. I need you to get locked in on this data, to do the research, and to come join me every weekend. We're going to come together, and we're going to look at and analyze three archetypes over the weekend. Every weekend, we're going to look at three archetypes. According to my data, we have over 400 plus archetypes and many incoming, and we're gonna need a lot of research. But let's just take a look at this first version of the deck because this is absolutely incredible and it's something you have never seen before. The whole idea of this deck is to make sure that we use Tenpai Dragon Chundra to attack and basically OTK. But Chundra is special because Chundra has one effect that, that makes this whole deck, this whole archetype come alive. And this is how I know that creative minds aren't vocal in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. I'll say it again. Creative minds are not vocal in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Paul said on his Yu-Gi-Oh! show that hard work isn't rewarded in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community when you come to YouTube. And that's true. But I'm putting in the hard work for you. I'm putting it in the AI and you can access it at any time. Because once I'm done with this demonstration, I take all of the information that we've learned here. I take the deck and I put it into the Duelist AI. As a matter of fact, you can go to it right now and you can say, give me the 10 pi distribution. And when you ask for the 10 pi distribution, the AI will deliver to you the deck list and the video that we're referencing here. But the reason why this whole archetype opens up, it opens up on one line. This is how I know there's not creative minds that are vocal. If you control a fire dragon monster, you can special summon this card from the hand. This card is the main starter. If this card is special summoned, then you don't have to use the normal summon, which allows you to do anything you want, literally, because it doesn't lock you into anything like it's. It's, it's absolutely insane. So what is the archetype asking us? This archetype is asking us, can you sp special summon Tenpai Dragon Tundra? That's what it's asking us. It's saying, can you special summon Tenpai Dragon Tundra? My answer with this deck, the AI's answer with this deck, yes, we can. So first, we're just going to show you a standard combination, which opens up by using at least two cards going second. And let's just say we didn't use any hand traps, right? So we got three cards of disruption. We got a hand trap. We've got two spells, right? So And we're going second. So just imagine. Use your imaginations. I know you might be, hey, wake up. I know you might be falling asleep. You're about to click off the video. Wake up. We're going to use these two cards and imagine that our opponent has back row and a monster. So Regeki... And then we're going to use Lightning Storm. We'll put it face down. Now, Chundra's going to attack and deliver the OTK as you expect. This is a really good card. You you know, you summon Sangan Kaiman. You play all your cards. If your opponent doesn't have any response to the Chundra, then normally it's just game. You know, they're not going to respond to anything else. Now, let's go ahead and check and see how the AI has improved this deck and taken it from just... I hope Chundra can attack to more. 
Now, this is what I would consider to be the normal OTK now that you have this improvement, because we're not just going to use Chundra. We have a whole approach and a line that allows us to special summon and, and not use the Chundra on our normal summon. So, again, use your imaginations, my friends. Use your imaginations. And, and think about all those times when you saw a guy on the main stage losing to the world champion because his deck bricked and he didn't have any options and the world champion outplayed him through max c this is the only chance you got my boy so look at this right here we're going to start out by using dia bell start a black witch to go and get the card that gets us into the snake eye now you might cringe a little bit right here and surely I did too. But listen, the AI doesn't give a fuck about you or my biases. We both got biases, okay? But we're doing this for science, man. This is for science. So, Snake Eye Ash, Ash effect to go get the Poplar, Poplar effect to summon, and then Poplar's effect to go get the uh, Divine Temple. Now, Crack off the Divine Temple, and then we're going to summon out Snake Eye Dia Bell Star. Now, this card is not in Master Duel, so this particular Xyz combo cannot be done in Master Duel, or at least I don't know if this card is in Master Duel or not. You know, I haven't played Master Duel in a minute, so I don't know if this card is in Master Duel or not. But this card right here is, the, is, is another key in this deck. It's a fire level eight spell caster but that doesn't matter for now but what matters is its effect says that you can target a fire monster in the graveyard and special summon it from the spell trap zone which in a fire deck means that you're going to have tons of opportunities to do so but also it being a level eight synergized with the deck so well so go ahead and use the effect and we're going to special summon it by taking we're going to use ash blossom but use your imagination it's a whole fire deck it could be any card here so we're going to use Ash Blossom. We're going to bring this card out. And then we're going to go ahead and bring out Snake Eyes Flame Burst Dragon. Now, why is this relevant? Because it's a fire dragon. And if you got what on the field? If you got a fire dragon on the field, you can special summon this card. So now this is live. And we still got some plays here. Now, this gives us plenty of opportunities for our opponent to respond to this. And our opponent can play Nibiru and Ash and blah, 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 blah. I can hear you typing in the comments, you fool. But don't you understand that if my opponent has wasted all that stuff on these or nibiru all that on these, then I can just normal summon this for game? Don't you know that? Okay, that's why I showed you in the beginning that this card can actually one turn kill by itself but all these cards are threatening enough to make my opponent respond now or they're gonna lose all right so we're just gonna keep going and now we're gonna play this card pre-preparations of rights if there wasn't a reason to play ash blossom of joyous springs and you were holding it in your hand if you didn't play it on this you're a fool but if they don't play it on this they also lose because for the first time ever, Tenpai has an OTK that's beyond this, beyond Chundra. Tenpai has the double dragon now. Get ready. Now, we're going to go ahead and drop the level 8 spellcaster and trade it in for a what? Dark. I'm sorry, not a dark. A fire dragon. This is a fire dragon. So, what happens? Chundra is live. Now, this card says... When a card or effect is activated, quick effect, pop a card. What do I have in my hand? A, a quick effect? So when I activate this effect, I chain this effect. What is this? A chain block, number one. Number two, what is this? Clearing the way for this card to resolve and play. But also, what does this do? Pop both a monster and a or and or. A speller trap. So that's absolutely busted. And it's going second. So and it came after you summoned Flame Burst. So after Flame Burst came on the field and pushed the monster into the spell trap zone. After Lord of the Red hit the field and popped the back row and or monster, then you summoned Chundra. Not to mention you could have had Lightning Storm. Not to mention you could have had Rageki. Not to mention the Ash that we didn't use that's in the graveyard. So there's so many possibilities. Use your imagination, my boy. 
So here we go. Pop it. Summon. Battle time. 15, 18, 24, dead. Now, what you just saw was the new, like, standard OTK. Now we're not, we didn't use our extra deck. We didn't do anything. That opens up this entire deck. Just think about that. Just think about that. That last play opened up the entire deck. I didn't use my extra deck. I didn't do anything except for play the cards from my deck. So my entire deck is now opened up. 15 cards in the extra deck is opened up to possibilities never before. Never before possible for Tenpai. Now possible with the AI and the Archetype Codex. And of course, YT Dan for putting all that shit together. Now watch this. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do our Day of Bell Star combo. But instead of giving them the standard beat them up attack, like let's just say, you know, it, they did some end of the main phase stuff, you know, or whatever the case may be. And you had to go back and, and you had to go back, you know, whatever they did, it was end of the main phase and you didn't get to attack on that last one. You had to go back on the main phase. Use your imagination. Now you got two level eights on the field. What you going to do with it? easy easy oh yeah i forgot to mention you know because we got the pushback you know don't forget to push your guy your opponent back but again that's what i like about this combo line the combo line has built into it built into it removal has built into it destruction so that means it's just like the tri brigade so it's just like playing the shoe rig combo but it's different now now we got out the uh number 97 Number 97 is going to help us summon number 100. And number 100, you know what I'm going to do with that thing? Super equip, boost to 9,000, and attack for game. Now, look at that. Look at that. That's absolutely disgusting. A two-card OTK that also removes the opponent's monster from the field and attacks for 9 Gs. I didn't play any other cards. Didn't use Chundra or... Or my num normal summon didn't destroy back row, didn't destroy monsters, you know, didn't play Lord of the Red. Imagine all four of these cards as a brick. Imagine all four of those cards as hand traps. Imagine all four of those cards as chaos confetti. Imagine them, my boy. But look, this is disgusting. AI Timpai. Xyz OTK. And then, of course, we got to look at the last OTK, which is your uh, Tenpai OTK. Now, why do we got to look at the Tenpai OTK? Because it's different when we have all these new toys. Because, again, it's not about... See, so many people that, that play this game are so close-minded and so linear thinking. You know, oh, I'll just... Oh, I'll just... No, oh, you won't just anything. We only get two turns. We only get two turns. That's like, that's the difference. You know, like, like you don't have, you won't have access to everything because you, number one, I know you aren't using my techniques because you're too busy yapping. The people who are using my two techniques are too busy winning. You know, and that's my problem. I, you know, my problem is I make content to send you away and, and have a good day and, and enjoy it and be fruitful. Most people make more content to suck you in and watch more crap. Hey, listen, I'm making something right here that's going to blow you away. His name is Lord of the Red, man. And nobody's playing Lord of the Red because nobody's thinking critically about their cards. Nobody's thinking critically about Yu-Gi-Oh! And thinking deeply about their archetype. The way that I am and being so vocal about it. And, and now I have the power to be consistent about it because I've created a tool that gets down to the nitty gritty that can show me enough information on a report that I can use my discretion to pick and choose what's good and what's bad. And that's how we get something like this. 
Don't look at AI as a magic divination machine to give you all the answers. No, it's a tool to provide you with more options so that you can win better, so that you can be more effective, so that you can lock in on your strengths and cover your weaknesses. Get in on this, man, and become a dueling engineer. It's free to use the app. It has memories. It's going to remember this. And when we work together in 2026, this, this AI is going to be more incredible than anything we've ever seen in 2026. Now, there's only one problem here. For whatever reason, I can't get it to remember the ban list. It's hard to remember the ban list for the AI. Now, I think that really comes down to a bunch of modeling things that nobody really cares to hear about. But at the end of the day, you got to tell it and it'll learn from our, it, it, its experience saying like, you're like, hey, you did it wrong. This is the correct thing. Then it's like, all right. And then it gets it, you know. But anyway, let's continue. So we're going to bring out lord of the red now the reason why i'm doing it like this just summoning lord of the red i'm just showing you like you know if you played lord of the red first like if you wanted to try to bait ash immediately and you activated this you search the deck and they didn't do anything then you play it and let's say in this deck as you saw we're running you know a lot of level eight monsters and sometimes you might just open with one you know, even though we got used to distribution, even though we um, have the deck set up with the never miss equation, you can still draw it. You know, the probability is not zero. So if you draw it and you happen to hit, you know, use the the uh, red eyes uh, transmigration, then you're putting this card on the board. Now, again, why do we want to do this? Because it's a herald. It's a herald for Chudra because then when you use Chudra's effect, you're going to come in and destroy stuff and, and pop stuff. Not to mention, we did not use Regeki or Lightning Storm. So again, use your imagination. You know, we didn't use the Ash. You know, like, use your imagination. Like, there's all these different ways of how we can get in there or there's all these different ways of how you can set it up but at the end of the day all it needs is just two things to complete the snake eye line and or summon chudra that's all you're doing in this deck then if you happen to have the cards to put this uh red eyes combo together you do it if you don't then oh well but the deck is so good it can afford to run garnets at the right ratio it can actually not it, it, it's negligible so we go ahead and use chudra in combination and then you give them this you know bam take your 15 you know take your 17 take your 24 take your 16 you know <laughs> It's so silly, you know, and then, you know, all, all this, you know, and then there's more after this, you know, there's more gas after that. If somehow they survive, if somehow they don't, if they don't have something that stops the battle or puts the damage to zero, there's way too many options to, for you to not end the duel in this turn. So that's it for the combos. Let's get into the deep analysis of the deck utilizing the AI. All right, my boys, now that I got all that information into the system, it's giving me back a full report on a win rate estimation. So basically it said the average Tenpai Dragon deck is winning somewhere between 75 and 80%. And as it estimated the win rate on my Tenpai Dragon deck, it's giving the same estimation of 75%. Now, the reason why it's not giving me the additional 5% is saying due to the complexity of multiple engines that could result in an awkward hand or maybe something in which a situation I can't play through. But when it's counting in the uh, factor of the additional play lines of going first it thinks that that more than compensates for the complexity but it also doesn't understand the whole idea of number one not using the lord of the red combo because it's completely 
a supplement. You can literally replace it for the seven because you want to run your 18 hand traps, right? So instead of running, um, you know, seven hand traps, I'm running one system. I'm running one combo line that is a disruptive go second follow up combo. So in theory, it has more longevity, but again, it doesn't know that. But it factored in 5%. So maybe it does. But now let's talk about some interesting things here that we also found in the research. Now, as we were going through different um, parts of our chat, the AI brought up some great suggestions on things we could use to get our line started. Because basically the whole idea was to get a level um well to get a fire dragon out onto the field easily and there's tons of cards to help do that but we this all started here with black metal dragon because black metal dragon it actually gave me a combo to set up black metal dragon using a uh, red eyes insight so that i could play lord of red now that was a pretty good combo. Don't get me wrong. But the only thing I didn't like about that is that I had to run a Garnet Red Eyes and 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 there was no distribution in the world, <laughs> no champions equation in the world that would not make me disgusted if I pulled that Red Eyes. So I was determined not to use that. But I definitely thought the AI was on the right track when it suggested Lord of the Red. Then as I went down the rabbit hole of Lord of the Red, I came across the idea to use Snake Eye Engine to summon the only fire dragon I've been dealing with for the past year. <laughs> been fighting this guy for a whole year. And then I remember remembered there was a fire dragon around. So you got the fire dragon at home, had to bring him in. Then we looked at more fire dragons because we had Burner, the dragon uh, ruler. So we looked at all the dragon rulers and we did have a nice dragon ruler combo, but there isn't enough cards to um, that re regenerate. And it, there isn't enough cards that, that synergize well with Burner. And there's also, you know, that's something I did not mention. There was a synergy score uh, with some of these um conversations like as you're going through you can just ask it like what's the synergy level between this card and that card relative to my starter and it'll say oh it's 10 percent or it's 100 percent like 100 percent would be normal summon stratos go get stratos that's 100 percent for example um you know arm dragon engine it suggested that and it ugh, arm dragon was crazy but um i just i I had more ideas with Arm Dragon that doesn't deserve this deck list. I will say Arm Dragon was incredible, but again, the AI was like, we we got to do something about this. Then, like, this is the whole thing about the AI that people don't understand. It's all the informations in the world through the eye of a needle. That, and it, and and I'm using that information to thread the tapestry of Yu-Gi-Oh. This AI believes that, you know, hey, we've got to solve these Yu-Gi-Oh problems, man. Or, or there's going to be no tomorrow. That's how my AI thinks, man. So it's throwing stuff at me like we got Arm Dragon. We got all this stuff. It's still suggesting a few banned cards here and there. Hey, what are you going to do? But, you know, it is what it is. Then... It ran this whole idea of using Dora Dora and Red Eyes Darkness Metal because it was all on the line of, hey, if you use Dora Dora and you get your line going, you got a dragon out. So, hey, you can summon this guy and, and push, push, push. You know, another good idea. So I put it down here. And then this is the final one that I really like. Ruins of the Divine Dragon Lords. This was a suggestion. I forgot why it suggested this. I was asking for something and it suggested this. And I and I think I had it on like provide short answers or whatever, but I never I don't think I've really read this card before. So I'm gonna read it to you right now. Um, because it's incredible. It says if a monster's is special summoned except from the graveyard. So I think this came out to set up that Felgrand thing. 
while you control a level 7 or 8 dragon monster, negate that special summon monster's effect until the end of the turn. <laughs> and if this card leaves the field once per turn, you can send one other face-up card you control to the graveyard and special summon one dragon lord's token. If this card is in the graveyard, you can send one level seven or eight dragon monster to the grave to like put it. I think it puts it back in your hand or puts it back on the field or, or something like that to uh, hand or face up on the field. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a really good card. It's basically a, a spell card skill drain. And a lot of people are talking about you know, how weak Tenpai is and not being able to survive after going after the OTK. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not even trying to be funny here, but imagine using, like, like someone like made the comment about the AI saying Dark Ruler no more. And again, it made me think like, like when, oh, that's what it was. I was asking it, like, why would you put in Dark Ruler no more? And I think this was around one of the, reasons or, or or how it could work or something because the the idea is oh i dark ruler no more i used one like card like chudra or whatever yum 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 eat up all the monsters blow them all up you know attack them synchro pop 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 you know do all my stuff and then because i got all these big guys on the board just play this and in turn you know <laughs> Like it was like, you know, it was like basically you could knock them out in floodgate and pass. And I'm like, well, yeah, you could do that. That's incredible. So, you know, that's that's pretty nuts. So um, let's keep talking more about the deck list, because now we can actually talk about the deck list and, and get into it. I have so much to explain to you here um, about this. The extra deck was an afterthought i was only trying to make the combo so i wasn't trying to make the extra deck as broken as possible i leave that up to you these videos aren't to tell you how to play it's to show you these lines so you can innovate with them but when i build my decks from now on i don't build my decks with the idea that oh i'm running starters and extenders i'm do 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 no i'm running my deck into the archetype i'm playing into the archetype so what does that mean playing into the archetype i'm focusing on that special summon of the card that needs to be normal summon and or special summon to start that crazy line so right now we know that that's tempai dragon chudra but in the way i got this extra deck not extra deck, the way i got my deck set up is to show you all the cards that can be special summoned to start a line so, which is important because starting a line off a special summon baits the opponent okay if you don't do that then you're playing directly into whatever they have and that's why you're losing and, you, and it feels really bad so i'm just just so, so this if you don't learn anything learn that so diabel start the black witch is gonna get us into the one snake eye ash. So will all these cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're running six cards to special summon snake eye ash, which gives us a high level fire dragon, which lets us special summon Chudra. Okay. Then we're running. How many Chudras can we special summon? We can special summon one, two, three, four, five, six Chudras. Seven Chudras. We can special summon seven Chudras. Okay? So that's pretty good odds that we're gonna have a high level dragon and a Chudra. So if we so if we so 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 we need to prepare for that scenario and then and worked out in our planning okay so now what is the the next special summon that we have and it's just our hand trap line and or um go second line and or um you know lord of the red which as i was telling you guys before on my other videos about omni cards lord of the red is an omni card because he serves multiple f purposes what is the purpose he's a fire he's a level eight dragon 
he can um pop a spell or a trap. He's technically a plus one and he's summoned for free off of Dia Belst. <laughs> this is the stuff that the AI doesn't understand, which is why it took off 5%. But this is what I'm telling you. So you understand. So you put that 5% right back. You get in there and you tell me a 100% report. You need to prove the AI wrong. The AI is setting a benchmark for you to overcome. The AI is saying this deck is only worth 70%, but if you can get 80% on it, you're a better duelist. All right. So here we go. Where are we at now? The normal summon. Finally, we've done all these special summons, but pff, duh, how do we play this game with normal summons? Now, the biggest problem with this deck is that they always brick on these dragons but we're not gonna brick on the dragons because we're running one two three four five six seven eight nine ten which is all you should run ten is one line i want you to think about that when you're building a deck if it's a 40 card deck ten is a line of consistency so what is a line of consistency I want to do this every time I duel. I want to be able to normal summon and attack for game. If I normal summon Ash, it's over. If I normal summon this, it's over. It's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, 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 over. You get it. You get it. Okay? You get it. And we got another line of consistency. What is that? Hand traps. Because now that we're done with these normals, now we're on our hand traps. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? Ten. Complete line of consistency. We can play around with the numbers, but don't break the rules. You see what I'm saying? Now we got a little extra in here the Regeki, and this is 11 in terms of it. But it's not really 11 because in our combo, We've got back row and monster destruction and a push to the back row. We've got that included for free. Those fries come in the bag. They're on the bottom of the bag. Okay. That's what's going on right here. So now that we have these additional abilities on top of these lines, I can finally start telling you about the cost of playing such a deck. What is the cost? And it's not really a cost because it's perfectly balanced, like all things should be. Why the deck is 41 cards. So let me explain this to you. Because this is the champion's equation and the distribution at play. So we have this card, Divine Temple of Snake Eye. It is a part of a combo line. So, you know, it's a garnet, but also it's really good. So it's not that bad. And, and our combo line is so consistent that I don't have to worry about it being an issue. The only thing I have to worry about is only a garnet if it's in my hand. And since it's at one and my deck's at 41, there's the same opportunity. It could be at the bottom of the deck that it could be at the top of the deck. And if it's at the bottom because it's 41 cards due to the champion's equation, it has been erased. Now, that same thing applies to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. And you might think this guy's running eight garnets in his deck. That's almost a line of consistency. Mm. If you said that, what's up, my duelist? Become a dueling engineer, man. Hit that like and subscribe button. I need more people like you. If you didn't think about that, hey, man, keep on listening because we cooking right now. The reason why that doesn't matter is because we run pre-preparation of rights, which can obtain any two of these cards and we run them at four. So there's a, a stronger possibility that we'll open up with these two cards. Okay. There's a strong possibility. We'll open up with these two cards or this one card. Mathematically, if we open up with access in that way 
because our one card combos are so consistent on the other side coming through the special summon we will get that true combo you know what i'm saying so it evens out they even out with three and four you know what i'm saying but where it gets weird is if you take this down to two or you take that down from four to three, that's when the numbers get crazy. But, but this is a very, like, like, again, this is, this is very, mm, that's why I said the seven cards can be changed out for whatever. Oh, that's also kind of funny too. I knew I was going to talk about that. I put seven cards down here. I'm, I'm just, I love, talk, I love this so much. I love this so much. This is why I'm doing it, man. But anyway, let's continue. Um, there's only one garnet in this deck truly because all these cards are going to fit in the, um, space of being used. There's only one garnet in the deck and technically is this card pre preparation of rights. We have one pre preparation of rights that cannot be used. If you draw two pre preparation of rights, it can't be used. Right. And if you draw, um pre preparation of rights after you've utilized all the resources can't be used right and if you draw two of any other rituals you can't use pre preparation of rights so there's only one garnet in the deck which is why we run the deck at 41 because technically if this whole deck gets shuffled and pre preparation of rights is at the bottom the entire deck is alive. So I'm going to leave you with that, my boys. I hope that this video was good. I'm going to be working with my team, with my editors. I'm going to be working hard to bring you guys Yu-Gi-Oh! Fractal in a very much nice, put-together, beautiful way. But this is what it's going to look like from seed to seed. Let me know, my boy, what you think. And as always... I want to see you dueling, my dueling engineer.